You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, LuchaCentral.com presents Masks, Mats, and Mayhem. Welcome to another edition of Mass Mats and Ma'am. I'm your host, the Outlaw LA Red. You can find me on social media at Justin Harvey75. You can find the entire show on social media at MMM Show75. And, and my little thing down there says at Justin Harvey75 this time, because I'm using my phone. I figured I'll keep the Outlaw LA Red thing for just my computer, but apparently that doesn't work in Cleveland, the home of rock and roll, rock and roll Hall of Fame. Um, that up there is at Byron Fever. That over there is at Lucha Gringo, Professor Casey. And that over there is uh, some right. Leeds loving piece of Falmouth crap, Meatloaf. What's Sorry. going on, Meatloaf? How's your team doing? We, well, we lost 4 3. Nice. But we lost four three against the previous it league champions. What your team did? Who cares? Who gives a and fuck our centre back soccer. pairing were never played played together. So and one was like he's only ever played three professional games in his career. So. You're still talking oh, about footy. So oh, I'm talking more than that. Oh my god. Anyway, a um, little bit of stuff going on in wrestling this week. I don't even know where to start, but I'm just going to start. We're just going to go and we're going to do a thing. Yeah. Hey, uh, a Byron is Klein Rock showing up today. Did you send him a he, thing? He never confirmed. And I don't care Liverpool about if he confirms or not. Send him a link and tell him to get his ass over here, that piece all of right, crap. All right. The hell our, other, our other friend said that uh, they would get back to me in an hour. Send them a link, too. Okay. Send them a link. Tell them to show up. Tell them to get their asses over here. Anyway, um, Finn Balor is the champ on NXT. I know uh. it's not a Lucha Libre thing, but there's a reason why I want to talk about it, because I believe – that Finn Balor is the champ that NXT needs. I know Meef Loaf is not going to want to hear that for any reason whatsoever. Right, Meef? He's a cunt. <laughs> I don't know why you would say that. Like you, you guys come up with all these ideas about how he's causing all this backstage stuff. Because he to seems me, to salt Byron. To me, to me, he seems like a guy who likes to play yeah. the guy and has a huge hog and, and just got married and he's getting a great paycheck to work like you like Benoit as well, didn't he? Everyone likes yeah, Benoit. But Benoit but didn't play with Legos and have a good play with Legos. So it's like I just don't see what Finn like you see in an interview he said NXT has revitalized and helped his career and blah 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 demon stuff, which we could get into. But basically you look at him and you're like, why would he be bitter about anything? Well mm. I think that Finn Balor is in fact the champion that NXT needs for one reason and one reason only. Somebody has to put over some new guys. As much as I love the Cross Keith Lee thing, those were two relatively new faces in the WWE universe, and they can only help each other so much. If you've got a guy like Finn there, it's his job to do a job. You know, does that not make sense? He needs to step up, do a job for somebody. I don't care if you it's mean, Damian Priest, like the, I don't uh, care if it's Bronson Show or whatever that guy's name is, or... I don't care who it is. Uh, so no, it's, it's, it's great because he's the most legitimate face that they have in NXT too. Yeah, absolutely. There's a reason why they sent him down there. It's like he doesn't need to hold the belt for any specific amount of time, but as a stopgap to finishing out, to, to creating a compelling storyline in that division, I think Finn Balor is exactly what you need on, on like a short run. Like seriously, for Bronson or I don't care if it's Cameron Grimes, HDF, Cross coming back, he needs to put over one of these guys. He has mm -hmm. to do the job. Can he do the job in a couple of months? Will he do the job? That's what I'm wondering. Will he I do the job, he, Byron? I think he absolutely will. Why wouldn't he? I mean, he, mm -hmm. he gets to go home to what he goes home to. I think he lives a happy life, and I think he's appreciative of NXT where he gets, again, the same paycheck to work a couple times a month in, you know, and gets to work the so, way that he would want to. I'll tell you a little story, Byron. Okay. Eric Hernandez. That's a good story. Yep, yeah, that guy was on how many millions a year? Wonderful life, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, he ends up like better people. Okay. What? I'm just saying. Just saying. It's no. it's not a good example to turn around. Look, and say he, goes, he didn't, a he life didn't play with Legos, bro. He didn't it, play it's with like, Legos. It's like look, Byron. I think he played I, with Legos. 
I appreciate your analysis of Finn Balor as someone with a huge hog that plays with Legos as well. I understand what he's going through. Yeah, that makes sense. That tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd buy that. Have you seen... Okay, you know, I'm not going to pass judgment on his wife, but have you seen how happy Finn is with his wife? Yeah, yeah, he's a happy dude. She probably... She probably helps him read the instructions and stuff when he's building shit. <laughs> why would he want? Why, yeah. So why would he want to actually be blue the, six it, by four goes with brown two? I by just two. don't flat. Yeah. I, no, just, no, I just don't know like, what so, like, playing with Legos and having a good looking wife equals. I'm being, saying. Not a dickhead at NXT. I just don't understand why you're getting the two two together. I don't know oh, if he yeah, is or no, isn't. The, I, but I agree with me. Huge I feel hog like also. he is. I feel, I feel, I feel like there's something afoot there. I, I don't know, and I mean, I've never heard anything good about him from there. I've heard a lot of things good about a lot of other people, and you don't necessarily hear anything bad. But I haven't heard anything. Oh, I'm good the biggest about superstar him. in NXT. I'm the and best I, person they've got here. Everything I, should be on me. I would feel like somebody at this point would have said something nice about him. Yeah, but he is barely around because he's playing Legos with his wife. Well, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she probably it. uses her nails to get the hard to pull apart pieces off. I was asked. Like, how many tapings does he go to? Once a month, maybe? And then he. Yeah, because then you get to wrestle twice. So, what you're suggesting, Byron, is that he doesn't turn up for work and walks, walks around like he's a mega superstar. Is that- I'm not suggesting he walks around like a mega superstar. Kind of no, sounded dude. like it. He, he has a massive dick. He has to walk like that. That's true. That's <laughs> cent- centrifugal forces, you know what I mean? Yeah. Centrifugal, isn't it centrifugal? Oh, guys, speaking See, of huge so- hogs, I got to say that GCW, for one of their October shows, has announced Two Cold oh, Scorpio versus AR Fox, which sounds Man. like... What? One of the yeah. greatest matches in the history of the universe. I cannot wait to see it. Byron, you're going to watch the shit out of all those. Oh, shit. What is that on GCW? Yeah, it's going to be on one of their GCW collective shows. Like Basically, they rescheduled all the WrestleMania shit for October, including Bloodsport. So uh, they're going to have a bunch of shows in a row. You can pay one price to get like the whole package of shit. And that's one of the shows that they're putting on. Oh. AR Fox versus Two Cold Scorpio. A uh, somersaulting light tube leg drop. Does anybody even need Bloodsport anymore? I mean, now that we have Raw Underground, who needs it? I love Bloodsport. God damn it. I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, you Casey's know. leaving. <laughs> uh, Raw Underground, though, is pretty legit, obviously. Um, but um, it's it's a funny thing that some people you know, still try to work their gimmick and say, hey, let's get me in Bloodsport and Josh Barnett. Very politely has the same canned response every time. There's plenty of room for that sort of stuff anywhere else in wrestling, but we don't do it here. So, you know, don't waste your time or, or my time trying to work that angle. And yeah, he's people trying stuff. to get Karate Man Ethan Page in. And yeah. He, yeah. And yeah. people are, are, are getting butthurt over it. And it's like, He's being quiet and he's just saying that it's not going to happen. Don't work that. Don't work. That's Don't the problem with wrestling fans. They want to take all the aspects of wrestling that they enjoy from one place and turn it into everything. And ultimately, when it becomes popular everywhere else, they'll hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds appropriate. I, I people I that, find that people that don't even know what the great monumental Enochism is trying to fucking dictate what. Bloodsport can do. Well, I have a message for you. How my dictate. <laughs> what? <laughs> I like that. That was a good setup. That was solid. Uh, I keep I trying to lean into my, my microphone, even though I'm wearing a lav. Yeah. That, 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 so you just like, know. All right. <laughs> all right. So I want to talk about Hello. the Genetti thing. I, I got to talk about the Genetti thing. Oh, that time he went through the barbershop window. That was fucked up. Why did he, go, why he jump through it? That's yeah, weird. why was he trying to escape from Shawn Michaels? His friend was uh, trying to talk to him. No. Shawn Michaels is somebody's friend? <laughs> Shawn Michaels is everyone's friend as far as they know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, Richard no. Mann can tell him something different. but <laughs> you, you can't tell who he's looking at when he's talking, so everyone just assumes it's that. What happened to his eye? Because I was watching some stuff the other day when he was in England. It was really hilarious. But and his eye was straight. k Kayfabe was the Jericho like TV shot, I think, but somewhere around there he caught a kick or an elbow and it kind of 
Yeah, and it just keeps getting worse. But they they tried saying it was from the Jericho Tron and his face going yeah. through that. It's like a three thousand um, Jericho Tron. Of course, it's not Shia Ball. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm talking about the Marty Jannetty thing that people think is super duper racist, where he says basically that he is scared of black people um, and that he feels this is a, a valid concern. He also goes on to do the uh, I have a black friend thing, which he does. Plenty he of black, black friends. And Plenty. he has, and he has he a black friend. Black chicks, too. Yeah, he, likes, he has he a black friend. That. Um, but unfortunately, that black friend is our team, the African Dream. So yeah, he, has, uh, he has plenty of black daughters he wants to sleep with too. Uh, wow! Yeah. Oh. Pl- plenty of oh. plenty of black friends know. that he's got buried out in the desert. So anyway. here's my thing. Here's my thing. I actually really appreciate this, not because it's not uh, veiled with racism. Not that there isn't a certain amount of uh, ignorance in his statements. And you can read them. They're on his Twitter. It's the big post that says, this is why I stay in trouble because I speak real talk and blah, blah, blah. Because I like, confess to murder. White people <laughs> understanding that black people have to grow up differently and blah, blah, blah. But so here's the thing. And here's how to, kind of how I equate it. I appreciate this because of the fact that people like this who are at least rationally stating what their issue is, I can work with that. What I can't work with is some guy who is super nice in your face, says that he, he believes in the cause and whatever, and then goes and puts on a sheet, burns something down, and tries to kill you later. A guy yeah. like this who is saying, yes, I have legitimate fears of, or legitimate to myself, fears of black people, and that makes me react with a certain level of caution when I interact with black people, I get it to a certain extent. Because guess what? I'm the same way with cops. Is there ever a time when I have walked up to a police officer and I have not said to, in my mind, I have a certain amount of fear here and until I get to know this specific officer and until I am comfortable with this situation, I'm going to treat that level of fear with a certain amount of respect so I don't get my ass killed. Just like uh, Marty Jannetty is treating it with a certain amount of respect so that when he walks into the hood, he's going to have his neck on a swivel before he goes to the liquor store for some Mad Dog 2020 so he doesn't get his ass shanked in a fucking alley. So I get it. Yes, it's a little bit ignorant the way he stated it. He does have a little bit of growing to do. But I think we can't cancel Marty Jannetty for this <laughs> because we can, we can work with that. We can work with people who have these kind of issues and these kind of fears in mind. And the other, the other, uh, kind of, the other example to kind of give, uh, it's obviously sadly, sad, sad timing, would be um, directly after 9-11. I mean, can anybody really say when that happened they were cool, you know, and they didn't have any fears around like anybody who was a Muslim or like Arabian? I want to know. I think that happened. I want to. I want to know who. Um, who's going to book New Jack versus Marty Jannetty? Yes. And how GCW. much I can pay to see it, and how many weeks Mission of promos? Pro. Promos okay. ahead of time, though, not a one-show bullshit thing. I want promos for at least a month. Just okay. from New Jack. Marty doesn't have to say shit. New Just Jack New Jack. is the last person Marty needs to meet or work with to bring what? him back to the other side. Dude, no, no, he's no, no, like no. the best friend. Bring him, bring him back from the other side. I mean, some of it might just, just kill him. Punitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he has some come to him. Punitive <laughs> is fine, too. That's. I mean, that'll bring him around one way or the other. He's going to get there. <laughs> um, it's making a scaffold match. Yeah, I would like Big up. Swole to be the ref, the special guest referee for that. That would be awesome. And I believe that pretty much uh, any Coke dealer in the greater United States area could sponsor that match for you, Casey. Oh, nice, nice. Do you, do, you do, you do, you do you think Marty? What, Byron? Has, do you think Marty has his royal his WWE royalty checks sent directly to his Coke dealer? I hope so. That, that, would would, smart. that would absolutely make perfect sense. <laughs> but but record, his coke dealer, his no coke dealer is his manager. Man's, I have no idea of this man's drug use. We're just speculating based on facts. All right. And, so, and his and his way, own repeated admissions of drug use. Yes. You threw out you threw out a, a little big swole uh, reference, and I just wanted to add on to that. Big Thanks. swole is awesome. Yeah, big swole. Yes, rules. Big swole is awesome. Yeah. And look, uh, sadly. Most of the news in wrestling this week stems out of AW. We're going to talk a ton about it, a lot of Lucha Underground related stuff as well. Don't go, don't jump the gun, Meatloaf. Don't be a Byron and skip ahead. We'll get there. We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today, especially and most importantly, 
Lucha Underground, Season 1, Episode 19, Grave Consequences. If you don't know this match, first of all, you probably shouldn't be watching this show. Or you need to go and watch that right now. Hit pause on this. Go watch Grave Consequences. It's on Tubi. Go watch that right now. Come back because we've got plenty to say about it. It's one of our favorites ever. We're going to be right back after we listen to (sighs) Denise Salcedo over at Lucha Central Central with the Lucha Central Podcast Network update. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the Podcast Network section of luchacentral.com. Monday, Lucha Libre Figures and Facts returns with a brand new episode. Find the video version of each episode on the Lucha Central YouTube page at luchacentral.com or listen on your favorite podcast platform. On Tuesdays, Mass Mats and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at luchacentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live, it's WrestleBoss, where Fabi Chulo talks MMA and pro wrestling with special guests and listener Collins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchador are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed. And please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. We're back. Thanks, Denise. Yeah, that was super duper awesome. Love to hear from you. Uh, love to see all the fun stuff that you're out there doing. Don't know why you don't do it on the Lucha Central Podcast Network also, but fine, whatever. I guess some people just have it like that. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah cool. Kevin. That was the best point. <laughs> I don't think Kevin can afford her other than what he's already getting her for. He might can not we- be able to afford us for very much longer if he doesn't come through on a couple, three things. And he, need to get, yeah. he needs to get his ass on this show so I can talk to him about it. Because I'm we not are, yeah. calling him. We are Libre podcast. I refuse. This is the only place I will talk to anybody who works or does anything professionally in the wrestling industry. I refuse to do it on my own time. Fuck that. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> awesome that we're the best Lucha Libre podcast on the internet right now. And find we know about 25 Spanish words. Chupalo. Um, we Chupalo. know that many? Pinche. Combined. Yeah. Culero. Culero. Basura. There's duplicates. But sort of. Basura. That's a good one. The one the Basura. 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 Hey, me gusta. I am Borgesas. Me bebos gato. Me gato bebos leche. This is why we're the number four rated. No tengo echichi para relax. This is why we're the number four rated Mexican uh, wrestling podcast right now, because there's a lot of people in Mexico just looking at us like, what are these dumbasses trying to say uh, in Spanish? Honestly, look, <laughs> if you want to book, if you want to book myself as my alter ego, Ray Lampago Blanco, I am more than happy to accept booking fees in advance. I might show up. I might not. But that's that's not my gamble. That's the game. That's, that's the game. That's yeah, it's the game you got to play. Me gusta well, Lucha Libre por Vive. Rudos. 
I'll tell you what. Let's do let's do the most Latino thing that we do on this show, which is to talk about another episode of Lucha Underground. That was dangerous. Yeah. Does, does that even count though? Good. Well, I guess it's not season four, so it's okay. In this, in this episode, it's it so right. season one. Yeah, we're okay. I I can't say that in season four, but this one I absolutely can. Um, this uh, this is a turning point for Lucha Underground. If you've been watching this show for the last eighteen weeks or so, we've been kind of leading up to this point. There's a reason why we all still talk about Lucha Underground to this day, um, and it's not this, any of the episodes before this. No, I mean, there was some interesting stuff there and I was very excited about it, but I wasn't even watching regularly. Like I was catching up and I'd miss an episode here right. and there. Like there was one that we reviewed recently that I had actually never even seen before, which is amazing because somehow I some just missed it twice that I've gone through the whole series. Anyway, the, uh, the, the lead up to this was kind of them getting their stride, figuring out if it was even a good idea. People thought that it might turn into Wrestling Society X and just be a fun thing that just didn't really have legs, which I guess maybe at the end of the day it kind of still was. But regardless, Mm -hmm. no, they got over 100 episodes. That's a real show. Anyway, um, Mm -hmm. this episode means a lot to a lot of people. The, The fans kind of went nuts for it. We went nuts for it. It's good for a couple of reasons. The first reason is this first match. Aerostar versus Drago is a great way to get this particular one started. This is one of the only uh, long best of feuds that I've ever liked for any reason. Um, And honestly, they could have done the same match five times and I probably would have been okay with it, but they did Mm -hmm. not. They Mm -hmm. actually brought some new stuff to this one and I was, uh, I was very pleased with it. I, I, I was, I, first of all, I popped when, Drago came in with the extra mask thing on right at the fucking outset. Yeah. That was dope. Mm. It would, is it, you're going to have to correct me on this because Casey knows how to pronounce this word properly. Laves? Laves? The style? Yeah. It started very Yaves. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. It's um, it's a wrestling, counter-wrestling kind of thing that we've been seeing from Angelico on AEW a lot. Um, basically... Yes. The way Angelico does it, though, he doesn't have an opponent trained in it that can fight back and try to counterhold him. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it was like a translation fuck up because Yaves means key instead of lock, but they're locks like we would talk about in wrestling or holds. Um, but you kind of like get a submission, and then if the guy doesn't tap out, you you increase the difficulty into another submission, yeah. and you keep flowing through it. That's how Angelico yeah. does it now. That's how Solar does it now. That's how Negro DeMauro does it now. That's kind of how Zack Sabre Jr. does it now, uh, even though his is more a British version of that. All of yeah. them are kind of doing stuff that has evolved basically when um, Milano Collection AT started doing this style. And just kind of tying people up in knots until he got them into the paradise lock. Uh, You know, things like that. But uh, in this match, it's two guys that know how to do it. And it's it's basically chain wrestling, but it's the Lucha version of chain wrestling, which none of the moves are going to get a submission, but none of the moves are going to get a rest either. You're not putting the submission hold on to rest. You're putting it on to exhibit skill just like you would jump off of the top rope. Um, it's not like you're going to clamp on a headlock and sit on it for 20 minutes so you can catch your breath. You know what I mean? It's and also a mental so, thing, isn't it? You know, it's like a, you, know, you put your, your opponent through that mental thing of, I'll put you in this lock, you'll get out, you'll work your way, but I'll put you into something else and vice versa. They can reverse something and it's like the switch of the mental aspect. Yeah, yeah and it's kind of like a whole feeling out process. Lucha Underground kind of then turns the next transition into a dive usually when they do something like this. Yeah. And then, um, that kind of takes a different way out than Lucha Libre usually does uh, traditionally. Uh, I, I do want to point like anyone that's super interested in this style. There's two places I want you to look. One is on the wrestling genius subreddit, uh, which is run by Chris hero. Uh, Rob Viper actually talks about this style a lot and says more things than I ever could. Um, Rob has forgotten more things about Lucha Libre than I will ever know. And he's Canadian, which increases the difficulty tenfold. Um, also I want you to go to the Angelico team, uh, YouTube page run by our homegirl YYH. 
uh, she's got a bunch of training sessions where Angelico's teaching this style to people. The videos are only like 30 seconds each, but you really get a feel of how it's supposed to work and what it's supposed to look like. Uh, you can also see it every time Angelico wrestles on AEW, which isn't fucking often enough. And and this, uh, just on the Angelico thing, is, um, it's really surprising that some people don't know that that's his actual style of wrestling. Well, because he never got to do it on any of the big stages that we see on TV. <clears throat> and even I saw when him, he was in Bola, he barely got to use yeah. it, you know? I saw him, the first time I ever saw him live, I saw him versus Jack Sabre Jr., and That's awesome. That, That's a good it match. Was, it, it was very magical. A lot of the again, it's the British crowd who were like, "Yeah, New Japan, yeah." Against and who? Then, like, you Wait, know, against who? Yeah, Zach, the, Zach the, the, Saber Junior. Uh, for you listeners that are new, Zach Saber Junior. <sighs> is is Justin's Just, least favorite wrestler in the whole world. But me and Byron love him. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Wrestler? Yeah. You, you guys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the human noodle. Oh. Oh. Zack Saber is awesome, dude. We were if there we when had we fifteen, if we had Zack Saber Junior. when me and Byron were watching wrestling in the nineties, I would be a pro wrestler now because I would have felt felt less body conscious about myself all the time. He's like man's Maru, a pioneer. He is. He's like Maru Chan um, is to like a real bowl of ramen. Like maybe if you added a whole bunch of stuff and did it the right way, it would be good. But he's really just salty, wet noodles. That's See, all. The he thing is. is uh, Suzuki was talking about this a while ago um, in an interview. He she was lamenting how all the titles in New Japan sounded the same, or you know, were the same, treated the same, and how performers all were the same, and how he loved the makeup of Suzuki Goon because they were all they all brought something specific to the table. Like you're not going to see another Suzuki, you're not going to see another Zack Saber Jr. No one else is doing that, and he's bringing his specific style and i i like that about him now and also okay. he, he keeps that body type because that all, the whole package makes him unique did you say he, whole package the whole package mm-hmm. you know, that's a cup what? that he wears he wears a cup byron thank are you are you sure it's yeah like a shoney oh. carter going that's the whole <laughs> yeah. package Anyway, so but but back back onto what we were actually talking about, which is Aerostar and Drago. Like, they just keep taking things that you've seen maybe a little bit before and and kind of one upping themselves. Like the the suicide dive was more cannonball style, backwards off the top rope this time, and it was just trust fall. dope as hell. Like it was a trust fall thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. not a suicide dive, trust fall. Rope walls. Like, it's it's off because the top rope, cannonballs into it. And I mean, he was coming down like a rock at that time. The trust ball, but he knows Drago will come catch him. slower. Uh, Drago yeah, almost Dra- missed. He got there. Yeah. But. <laughs> he he'll 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 fucking kill himself to catch you though. That's the thing with Drago. Yeah. Like, yeah, he doesn't base often. Stuff. Yeah, he doesn't base often either. That's what's kind of cool is Drago's playing the base for Aerostar when usually these guys are teaming because they're both technicos and Drago doesn't have to be a base. You don't have to be a base for Rudos usually, you know. Uh, Rudos are usually the bases. Well, and that is one of the things that's weird about this because this is basically straight up Technico versus Technico, which, you know, you might get a one-off of here or there, but a best of five feud between two Technicos is kind of a rare thing. As it's much magical, as I love this. It's like a proper like showcase for the Lucha Libre style. Yeah, which but is all I these did... matches are, but... Sorry. Honestly, me, if I just kept remembering that in three seasons they're they're both losing yeah, to Jack know. Swagger. Yeah. Ah, that can never be t- no, you can never take that image from our brains. Season four. I still like to believe that if Casey had actually been there, somehow he could have stopped that all from happening. I, I don't yeah, know true. how, but I just I just I, feel I, like yeah. that was that was the I, I feel, like, I feel, I feel tag, tag me I feel, in and I'll take that white boy out. Fuck I, yeah. I, I, I feel I feel that if Casey had been there and seen one match of what was going on, he would have kicked down to Joseph Stone and punched him in the fucking face. I feel like DC would have been like, hey, no, there's like five guys that wear masks. <laughs> they would have had to have like security dragging a kicking and screaming child, a.k.a. Casey, out of the uh, building as he was trying I, to light it on fire. Just that like, security hey. was looking for reasons to drag me out of the building anyway. So, yeah. you know. uh, that is sex. potentially oh. true. Yeah. Uh, who knows what Waffle House was going to do? Um, anyway, I, there's a couple other things I really loved. I love the, uh, I don't know what you call it, Casey, the corkscrew tope thing that Drago did, like not to be outdone by Aerosmith. Tornillo. Tornillo. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, um, 
then then I, I know there's no name for whatever kind of crazy rope walk thing that Aerostar did right before the win because that was nuts. That, that was that's called corner a river. to corner yes. r- rope run thing into the Hurricane Rana off the top. That was yeah. That's that's called a rope under the middle rope the as face. well. Yeah, he, he probably he probably saw Phoenix warming up spots for the main event, and he's like, I'm gonna fuck this guy up. And he yeah. threw <laughs> let, let's be honest, running across the top rope is difficult as hell, and it, it, you know never think. But like to actually have because you have to curve your legs in to do the middle rope, whereas on the top rope it's just straight fuck it, go for it. Whereas the second rope is wow. Ridiculous. In the middle rope, if you fuck up, you can kind of roll out of the way. If you're doing the yeah. middle rope, you're hitting your dick if you fuck up, like no matter what. <laughs> and possibly wrapping your leg up into that twist. And, uh, yeah. like, and you just have to be a certain amount of bow legged, like Byron, and it works fine. Or Matt Hardy. Yeah. It's the closest. Keiji Mudo. Oh, I can't bend my legs. So Aerostar gets the pin here. It is now two to one in this series, which means we get yeah. uh, two more chances. Advantage Aerostar. Aerostar can just win the next one. He won't even have to go to that fifth match because that's always <laughs> what happens in a wrestling feud where they say best of five. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it never goes five. Come on. Like, why would it do that? Oh, my God. He won yeah, the they, in the WWE, it goes one match and then they cut the storyline short and you never see it happen again. Unless, unless gotta, Cesaro's involved. Yeah. I gotta admit you, something, you guys. Come on, let's oh. let's be real. How many of you fast forwarded straight to grave consequences from this yes. point? Because I yeah. fucking did. Uh, oh. I did not. Oh, I watched the chess puma thing. I watched the t- oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. was Conan. Yeah. Conan's chess package in the park. That was kind of fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that whole that thing. Way. And we got to see a murder totally not on mass luchadors. Yes. Yeah. I, I dig it, and this is part three now of this Conan package. Why did yeah. he put Loco in five different masks on season four? <laughs> he could have almost been his own tag team. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. You know, going underneath the ring and then coming back out with another mask on. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, he could have done it. So you, I, I Casey, just, yeah. you're saying you weren't really into uh, Big Rick versus the crew of Big Rick doing the, his face turn here to get the, some big pop action from the crowd in this exciting, uh, exciting romp through uh, wrestling history. I gotta say, I liked the I liked the finish, but it was all Cholo. And because yeah. yeah. uh, uh, for those of you that skipped this match, everyone. Um, Cholo does a sick blade job and then fucking gets Uranage on an open chair, which was fucking which was dope. dope. Cool. And yeah, so uh, here's the match for you. Bale eliminated, uh, double suplex on Cortez and Cisco. Cortez eliminated. Sexy Star pushes Cisco down the stairs, kinda, but not kinda, really. Yeah. She then, uh, and, like wait for her to keep pushing him down. Right. And, and it was the Cisco padded stairs you need to push. Yeah, Cisco feeds himself back to to Big Rick for the Big Rick right, and then uh, then you get the yeah. blade job off the Big Rick right, right? That's Did he do weird. anything else to cause the blade job, or just literally the punch caused? It was I, I think it was the punch. It yeah. was a slow punch, and he was gearing up for what looked like a lariat or a clothesline. Yeah, a lariat, and then he went yeah. for just regular Hogan punch where you I think face and punch the back of your hand and then their head I think whoever put the blade who agreed to do a blade job in this match was kind of a dipshit agent wise uh, just well, saying I feel, like, I feel like Big Rick forgot whatever the spot was supposed to be that was supposed to be no. us there and Cisco was just like I guess I'll just believe here because this guy doesn't know what he's doing still though yeah. if you're going to have such an impactful blade job in the next match why do one here too right yeah See that? No. That's another thing. But also, but you had to. It, speaking okay, of unmasked wrestlers, this, this match just shouldn't have been in this show. If this was right. su- supposed no, to be yeah. some kind of big payoff thing, this was the wrong place for it. But yeah. maybe it was also just like we need to throw this thing away. Like we always knew this was going to end with Cisco getting something beat up about uh, about his face and eye. There was no mm-hmm. other way to end this. So they had to do it, but yeah, I don't know that they had to do it here. They could have probably found a better place to do it in general. Maybe they um, like uh, introducing the match and saw the kind of fire and kind of comeback that that Big Rick does and decided the whole thing wasn't really worth it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a little bit of a throwaway, which leads us to 
the crowning achievement of the first half of season one and possibly the entire series, the very first uh, Phoenix versus Mil Muertes grave consequences. Oh, right off the bat, I'm a fucking asshole, you guys. That's because I, I gave them shit about Katrina leaving The Rock and he did walk out with The Rock. Mill did yeah. have The Rock. So that that was my bad. I'm sorry. Which is interesting. I, I, I didn't address something earlier on, which I, I have in my first section of notes, is that um, Melissa Santos has an Eye of Horus glitter thingy on her shoulder. What mm-hmm. the fuck was that about? It's a, it's a, it's a, a fucking... No, dude, it's just saying Ray Horus is coming. Yeah, it was literally just some squidgy... PVA glued. I think I think, I think Cage I think Cage better ask Ray Horace some questions, is what I, I'm saying. What? Cage has got glitches. Oh. <laughs> it was always funny. But that's what's down his trousers. It's just a bottle of PVA glitter glue. Oh. It's, it's just, <laughs> gets everywhere. It's just uh, supplements. Oh god, but, glitter but my, my notes for this match is literally Phoenix arrives. Because whilst we've seen him being amazing, this is like the moment where it's like, holy fuck, he's a superstar. Okay, yeah, first of all, also, also this, like, this is the first good casket match I think we've ever seen. Oh, in history. Yeah. And I'm a lifelong yeah. Undertaker fan, so I can 100% vouch for that. Because uh, I'll but give you a little a, history. There's a reason for it. Well, I'll let you give the history. But, but to me, mm-hmm. just setting this thing up, to me, it was like this was the perfect cross-section of things that I like about wrestling. It felt... Uh, a little bit strong style Japanese when they were in the center of the ring together. It felt uh, very much like a, a lucha guy with a good base, like a, a good AAA or CMLL match that you don't even get that often where you have a strong base and like a top, you know, high flyer guy together really going at it. And it also had like all of the ECW plunder action and taking the ring ropes off and crazy new spots that you've never seen. So to me, it was like literally it was a cross section of, all the things I love, plus some storyline. You know, these yeah, guys aren't yeah. necessarily cutting. The only thing that was missing was a fire promo from one of the two guys. But Katrina, adding that element of it, kind of helped supplant that one piece that I would say was missing to make this a perfect match for me. But Casey, tell us a little bit about the history of of okay, so casket matches. Um, Uh-oh. the earliest casket matches that I remember. Oh, oh look, hey, look it's our boss. Hold on a second. Hey, I just had to hear about casting. Is it is easy it, there? Does this yeah. work? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, he's got uh, his disco inferno one. Oh no! I all got, right, everybody, I got, everybody, put put all the stuff away now. The boss is here. <laughs> <laughs> can he even hear us? Oh, look at this guy. I can hear you. I'll, I'll put this one up for him. Oh, yeah. Look, right. guys, we're gonna get right back to to um, all of the fun action and great consequences, but. We're being joined right now by Kevin Kleinrock, one of the masterminds of Masked Republic and our very own Lucha Central Podcast Network. Um, I'd say he's the boss, but Kevin, you haven't we're paid all, us anything. We're all bosses. We're, we're all bosses here. <laughs> yeah. Half it, half is. He hasn't Look, paid you. He pays me I, all the time. I, I know <laughs> because <laughs> but that's why you're locked into a contract to do this for a long time. <laughs> me, Flo, if you put your background to shame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, yeah. I know. I don't I don't know about that. I mean, I might have more variety, but I think we'd all kill for the uh return to Oz uh case showcase room that yeah. uh, that me found. <laughs> yeah. Is that a mask yeah. public uh mask right behind you? Next uh, to yes, it is. Yes, it's a uh, custom uh, from Busio. Oh, nice. with, next to a uh, Wagner with the design by Urban Aztec. Yep, also uh, handcrafted by Busio. Well, so if you guys don't know who Kevin is, and that wouldn't be surprising because he doesn't get over very much, let me put him over for a second. Wow. His, his podcast, Business of the <laughs> Business, is. Uh, uh, Absolutely wonderful. He does it like, I don't know, what What do you do it? Like once every 17 months or something? How often do you do that? Thing? No, actually, originally it was going to be monthly, but since quarantine, we, we have been doing it every other week. Uh, we'll see if it happens to this week, but um, it's been it's been pretty much every two weeks. What's the best one so far? Is it, is it Colt? That was my, I think that might have been one of my favorites. I don't know I why. Mean, I think it depends on, on kind of what, kind of storytelling you want. I mean, I've, I've tried to have real variety. So we've had artists on, we've had toy makers on, 
we've had the only wrestler that I've had on is Colt. So getting that kind of inside perspective from how a really a, a groundbreaking wrestler in the merchandise game, um, you know, his approach to merchandise, that was um, that was really cool to see. Uh, I think for, for those that don't know the podcast, essentially it's an inside look into how officially licensed wrestling and Lucha Libre merchandise gets made. So, um, and not just Lucha Libre merch, but, but other merch as well. But I always try to, you know, work in that, that wrestling or, or Lucha angle. So, uh, urban Aztec who's done t-shirts and masks and things for Mass Republic, but also for WWE, uh, all the WWE foot action stuff right now is, is from him. Um, we had uh, Jeff Everett from Rockets Are Red, who's done a number of officially licensed uh, posters, not only with us, but uh, WWE and a bunch of bands that you've probably Did heard. Did he of. rush? Did he rush? What was that? Did he do Rush? The band uh, Rush? Uh, I don't know if he did i think pale horse did one that's it so yes it's pale horse yeah. did the rush yeah, so it, so. i will be having chris uh on the podcast at some point um nice. we've talked to uh, eric aranya from boss fight studio we've talked to um uh jeremy from um the, the company name changes but jazzwares who does the aw figures mm -hmm. uh so a lot of great kind of the types of guests that you're not going to get on other wrestling podcasts Right, and What's, I'm a big uh, fan of the toy ones myself. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> those two. And there's yeah, there's something for look. It, it, everybody who listens to our podcast has got to be some kind of geek, so you should definitely check out mm -hmm. um, what Kev's doing on his show. And and it kind of leads me to the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring you on because obviously you know Kev and Ruben have a strong connection to Lucha Libre, and you've helped a lot of these guys get their own licensed merchandise out there into the public. So you guys have built a great rapport with a lot of luchadors and a lot of people in the Lucha Libre world, which also gives you kind of the inside scoop on what's going on with them legally. So I want to know, Kev, this is the <laughs> thing that I am most curious about right now. The reason what for the, the hell is going? Yeah, yeah, but what the hell is going on with, the, with Penta, with the Lucha Brothers? Like, what the hell am i supposed to call these what guys? are we allowed to no call clue. them yeah what are we allowed yeah. <laughs> to call them and why is this happening again it's my uh, fight with dorian back on well yes so <laughs> it's really not as it's not as i guess um devious or as problematic as it as it has been in the past really where we're at now is where i think at least penta would have liked to have been like at the beginning of aew so uh, I guess if we're going to summarize this all as quickly as possible, um, originally in AAA, uh, AAA uh, Penta was Pentagon Jr., Phoenix was Phoenix. Um, uh, probably covered on many other episodes of, of this podcast, um, there were a number of issues with Lucha Underground and the, the wrestlers that signed to Lucha Underground from AAA. Um, going all the way back to the first season where the talents didn't sign themselves really up for Lucha Underground. Those that were in AAA kind of got signed to Lucha Underground. Um, guys who spoke Spanish and did not speak any English were never offered a contract in Spanish. Uh, and there are a lot of, a lot of things that and technically under California law, that's, that's not even legal. Um, and so at some point, um, I'm sure those, uh, you know, on the show recall, uh, there was kind of an exodus of AAA talent from AAA, though they remained on Lucha Underground. They went to the crash, both of them. Uh, Penta, Phoenix. La Rebellion. Uh, yeah, the, 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 a, a number of athletes. Um, uh, uh, I think Jack Evans had left AAA at some point. Um, and so it got really contentious because the crash was – Triple A's main rival, not only in Tijuana, but the crash was going to start to be um, doing doing uh, shows all over Mexico. And at some point in the midst of all that, Conan left Lucha Underground, and then Conan also started booking for the crash. And so, a lot of behind the scene politics. And at that point, um, Penta changed his name to Penta L Zero M or Penta Zero M. And Phoenix changed his name to Ray Phoenix. And there were a number of um, uh, trademark and copyright type of filings. Um, in Mexico, Ray Phoenix secured Ray Phoenix. And, he sec and Penta secured Penta L0M. 
uh, in the United States, shortly after Penta changed his name on that crash show in January of, I think it was 2017, yep. LLFMV, the company behind the underground, filed a trademark on Penta Zero M in the United States. Just as they had also filed a trademark on Cerro Miedo. Uh, and, and it's a really, it's really kind of, cr- so, so wrestling contracts in general are very one-sided usually and not for the wrestler. Um, I, I've told this story before, but when, when we did Wrestling Society X for MTV, the first version of the contract that MTV wanted me to have the wrestler sign was basically that Lucha Underground contract. It was, yeah. it was pictured as a, was a contract for a reality show, not a wrestling series with wrestlers who have personas that come in and then leave. And, um, and I worked back and forth with the MTV lawyers for a good two, three weeks to just kind of get that contract to a place where I was comfortable handing it to talent and feeling like they weren't going to get screwed if – you know, the show didn't go and it didn't go. And and so everyone was really protected. Um, but with Lucha Underground, Penta had created Cerro Miedo before he ever stepped onto Lucha Underground. However, in wrestling contracts, again, most wrestling contracts in general, it basically says anything you bring in, we have rights to. And anything you create while you're here, we have rights to and you don't. Um, it's basically akin to a work for hire contract for people that are familiar with that. You work for a company, Mm -hmm. any ideas you have whatsoever belong to that company. Um, and it was interesting actually. Um, and I know the name is, is kind of, um, verboten these days, but, uh, when Joey Ryan was originally negotiating with Lucha Underground. Yeah. uh, We we were the penis gimmick guy here. Oh, that guy. Um, (laughs) well, when he was originally negotiating with Lucha Underground, we so we helped a lot of talents with their Lucha Underground. Not not the Mexican talents because they were just kind of like I said indentured servant to to uh, uh, the show. But um, there was a number of, of American talents who we were kind of helping behind the scenes, trying to negotiate their deals at first. Um, and one of the things that Joey wanted in his contract was that his name, his gimmick, would remain his and would not be owned by the show. And they told him no. But then after Japan and the, the, the penis gimmick and everything, they've said, you know what? We'll give you all those things you negotiated originally. Cool. You know, come work for us now. So his contract kind of had that protection in it. Um, but so once Lucha Underground trademarked Cerro Miedo, we, in his merchandising and everything else we were doing together, we switched to Zero Miedo. Slight different, but it was enough, um, at least in our eyes, that it was going to not appear with their trademark on the merchandise. Um, now, their filed trademark, because we'll get into something else in a, in a minute. But um, So they filed Penta 0M, but we decided we were going to still keep using Penta 0M because they it, trademark the way trademarks work, you can file a trademark and prove that you're using it right, right there and now, Go, you know, you submit um, evidence, essentially called a specimen, that shows this is how I'm using it in commerce. So, you know, this is this is it on my shirt, on my hang tag, or this is on a poster, the wrestler. But when Lucha Underground filed for Penta Zero M, they filed uh, a what's called intent to use, which is saying I have this idea, I want to protect it now, but I have six months to show that I'm I'm using it, and then. Um, If I don't show that I'm using it, I lose the trademark. So they filed it, but then they filed for an extension of another six months, an extension, an extension, extension. And eventually, I think it's like seven extensions that you're allowed to have or something. It's five or seven. It's multiple years. Um, And eventually, their trademark was abandoned because they never proved that they were using it. Um, Now, obviously, it's a little different that... Lucha Libre uh, FMV doesn't even really exist. I mean, it exists on paper, but it's not active. But even back then, there was still a good, at least a year, where the Lucha Underground was active and they just never, and they never did what they had to do. They were really just trying to block him from using it. So Right. Well, they, 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 they couldn't even get seasons to continue without weird hiatuses at, the point, at that point in time. So yeah. 
They yeah. couldn't get their show on the air to even use a trademark for a while there. Well, that's right. interesting too because they they created their own Pentagon named Pentagon Dark so they could use it right. as well. So they they pretty much came up with uh, their own character, their own Pentagon character. Hey, and at then, least they did a T-shirt for that one. <laughs> and, that a oh, God. and that was, I mean, and that made sense. That made perfect sense. I mean, from the beginning, and not that we have yeah. time to go into all the things that went wrong with <laughs> the beginning today, but from the beginning, um, you know, they wanted to have characters and and um, IP that they owned and controlled. And like, you know, like you guys mentioned, the only ones that really ever got merchandise, except for like the, I think they did like a Johnny Mundo shirt at some yeah. point. But again, Johnny had an actual Hollywood agent, um, mm -hmm. fun fact, also Hulk Hogan's agent, uh, who negotiated his contract for him. And so he had a very different contract. Um, and, and but uh, Pentagon Dark, uh, Prince Puma, and Mil Muertes were really the only ones that ever got merchandise. Um, you know? There was a weird yeah. thing with Germany as well. Um, Mike Ritter out in Germany, he does. He used to do WCW. Then now he does AEW. He's the guy who put out the um, Blu-rays mm -hmm. for season one. Um, Mike's really amazing guy to talk to as well. <clears throat> but like, they they had so much fun, and they got given the a license to kind of pr create merch, send it to Lucha Underground to get okayed, and then make it. But like. They, they actually put out a Cuerno one at one point, like a hoodie, but it was the original Cuerno without the mouth. But yeah, they that, that was a character they created, general. but they never could. Yeah. Phantasma well, had an amazing version of the Quick King Cuerno shirt that I've got. It's fantastic. But it's just like, it's so funny how they dropped that ball. I mean, so Kev, again, what's, what's the reason for the... What's the reason for the switch now? I don't I don't quite understand that. Is there some falling out with AAA, a triple A again? Um... Uh, so I guess without without saying too much that um, you could say too much. Well, I, I don't I, I don't want to say anything <laughs> prior to AEW saying something maybe. But um, bottom line is when Penta originally went to AEW, uh, he was still under contract, so to speak, in in some manner, shape, or form with Lucha Libre FMV. Um, and no longer is he, uh, from the beginning, he personally wanted to use Penta L0M or Penta 0M. He did not want to, like, he's fine, but there's still a, a relationship with AAA. He's, he is still in AAA. Uh, Phoenix is still in AAA. And in Mexico, they are down to be Pentagon Jr. and, and Phoenix when they're in, in AAA. Um, it was kind of, it was, it was, a. I still don't know the answer why uh, in the beginning AEW went with the Ray Phoenix, but then didn't go with the you know Penta Zero M. I, it might have been a a discussion that they had with um, with AAA, but essentially um, the original agreement when they came into AAA was kind of a three way agreement between AAA and um, Lucha Underground. I mean the AAA, uh, the the brothers individually, and then AEW, um, and so. Uh, there they had the option essentially, you know. Uh, Penta and right. Phoenix, said, you can call us Penta Zero M. You can call us Ray Phoenix. You can call us Lucha Brothers. Um, and then AAA had their their names there too, and they made the decisions they did back then. But now that there's a little bit more um, separation and a little bit more clarity of what can happen, uh, I just think that both Penta and AEW preferred to go with the name that Penta owns and controls himself. Okay. What's cool I though mean, is uh, because of that you don't have to change your action figure packaging and they probably do if they're far <laughs> enough along in production for that. Uh, you know, because, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know their figures are going to be out very soon as well. Um, that's, we do that's, have to say something though, Kev. Yeah. Their figures are garbage compared to theirs. So yours are, yeah, yours, yours, are yours are fantastic. Yeah. Theirs are absolutely pure garbage. Uh, Phoenix looks like it's been put through a blender. I, I don't know I, if I'd say pure garbage. I kind of like them. I ordered, I ordered them. I, I ordered them from Ringside Collectibles. I'm looking forward to to getting them and 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 supporting them. Um, you know, they they are. Oh, we'll still buy them, Kev. We're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll still buy them. Uh, Jesus I, Christ! I stand Culture. by though, regardless of anything. I stand yeah. by the boss fight figures that are coming out for Legends of Luke Gray. 
yeah. hands yeah. down the best Lucha Libre figures that have ever been released. Um, Are they doing a? They're doing a Vampiro doll, like two of them, right? Vampiro dolls. No, they're doing Vampiro action figures. Byron, you piece of shit. <laughs> that's what. That's yeah. what they're, they're dolls. dolls. They're totally dolls. They're vampire dolls. I, I will dolls. say that at this, at this moment in time, that uh, nothing has been officially announced uh, for that yet. But um, you know, if I come back on in another couple months, it might have been officially announced by then. So believe it. Also, Kev, if if you were to release a Cassandra one. You would be the f- first ever Exotico figure, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's no secret. Uh, uh, Cassandro did sign with Legends of Lucha Libre, which mm-hmm. is our, you know, IP and licensing uh, division. Um, you know, the, the the action figure that you know, not custom, but the actual mass produced action figures. The the timing of those is about twelve to eighteen months to market, yeah. um, and that's without covid and things like that uh, yeah. uh, our pens and phoenix were supposed to be out this past uh, august you know about a month ago now um mm-hmm. and unfortunately have been delayed um but they'll, they'll be out this year still uh but and that's like, even when you look at the aew stuff the reason that the aew figures are in their gear from all in the very first all in is because mm-hmm. that's how long it takes to get this yeah, to to be. this is this is almost it'll be more than a year um, uh, all in was two years ago now. Two years Jesus. ago, it was, it was up against our um first expo lucha in Las Vegas that same weekend. Yes, it was. Uh, so, we're talking those AEW figures have been in the works for two years. Um, so quite uh, on some level, uh, you know, quite quite a long process, but yes, so um, while nothing official has been announced yet, you can assume that there will be some sort of Cassandro collectibles uh, coming out from well, our line. Just, we have one request. That would make perfect though, sense. Yeah, Cassandro. The, the one request is it's, it, it's scratch and sniff. Yeah, <laughs> Cassandro yeah. is the uh, nicest you know, smelling luchador of all time. If you have I, a Cassandro uh, fragrance, this could be groundbreaking. This I'm gonna <laughs> no. When he, he he came past me in London and he got a waft <laughs> of the cape and I was just like, oh my god, I'm in heaven. We charge five percent. All right, so. You, what to do. you guys are putting Kevin over too much. I want to get back to the to the real questions here. The real yeah. questions. First of all, is Jojo Feeney a bitch or not? And second of all, are you in cahoots with him? What is going, going on, Kev? Why did uh, we get buried? This has been an age old question going on here. Wait, well, but but see, here's the thing, though, right? Uh, Jojo has gone above and beyond to make it up. Now I know you guys don't have it yet, but uh, there are well, there he, are looks. We've taken you guys off of the wall of shame, but you are still hovering on the precipice of just falling right back onto a spiked bed of Hall of Shame at uh, any moment now. Let's yeah. wait and see if, if JoJo could pull off this sponsorship deal for your for you guys. He is he has said is on its way. Uh, I think you'll have to keep him off the wall of shame at least as long as the sponsorship uh, continues. Oh no! First, no. And look, if it comes through, that's fine. But if then he's on the wall I'm of fame. I'm telling you, he is yeah. going to be impaled on the fucking wall of shame. It's going to be the most <laughs> merciless, brutal, savage thing you've ever seen or witnessed in podcast history. We're going to murder him for all time over the airwaves. So I, I get 15 bro, minutes straight of clean air. Where's the yeah, Hasbro for fucking up our storm shadows last week? And they're on there. They're uh-huh. on there. Well, listen, and guys, it's thought- been great. <laughs> It's been great having Kevin on. You you got kind of a little bit of the scoop there. We know you can't say everything every time, Kev. You got business to do. We absolutely respect that. We never want anybody to hurt their game by coming on the show. But thank you for coming by. And next time you come, you and I are going to have a little chat about a guy named Fogelman. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That, that, I've, got, I've got nothing I need to hold back there, so... <laughs> I know. That's why we got to bring you back, and then we can talk some more about all the stuff that's coming out then. Thanks right, for stopping me, Kev. Appreciate Take you, brother. Bye, Kevin. Bye. Bye. Byron, kick him off now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that was cool. That was cool. But now we have a history of casket matches to continue. Apparently, Do wait we need to take a first break of all. Let's take a break and then come let's, back. Well, if you guys would let me throw to the break, we could. Justin, All right, we should, we, should, should. we should take a break. Think. We should. Break. We should take a break. Should, should we take a timeout? Is that what you guys call it in America? Yeah, yeah Zach Morris timeout. Yeah. Now you're back. Now we get to Let's your take a break. 
Yeah, Denise, fine. Fine. tell us what's up with the lucha masks. No, it's. Th- I don't know. <laughs> Lucha-masks.com, in partnership with Mass Republic, give you personal protective masks to keep you Lucha strong in the fight versus COVID-19. With world-class luchadors Blue Demon Jr., the Lucha Brothers, L.A. Park, Ultimo Dragon, Kane Velasquez, Conan, and so much more. Head to Lucha-masks.com and you too can become a masked warrior. Lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. And we're back! That was back. So- wow. Look at you guys with all your Lucha-masks.com masks. What do you got, Casey? That's that's some, yeah. some new new? Oh, dude, this is so new that I should probably take it off so you can see it better. All right, my friends. Byron, give me the one, honey. Okay. <laughs> This is the official Lucha Bros Mexican King Cerro Miedo See You in the Ring mask. And uh, it sold out extremely, extremely fast. So if you want this mask, and you know you do, look at this shit. This shit's fucking sweet, bro. Go to lucha-mask.com and you can pre-order for the next batch. And actually get one and not be left out like the little bitch you are right now. So once again, that is lucha-mask.com to pre-order. Yeah, that's me. I'm on the pre-order list. I'm on the pre-order list. I messed up. I should have ordered As seen on AEW TV because on the last pay-per-view, Phoenix wore this to the ring. Dope. What do you got over there, Byron? My my cat is getting in front of my light. Okay. Get Get out my light, Millie. What are you wearing, Byron? I can really understand you. So I have a, um, I have a mask, masquerade Dorado. Yes. Mask, um, and it's on top of my Lucha Underground mask. Okay. And your cat's on top of that, and Meatloaf is shuffling a deck of cards on top of his microphone at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Oh, what are you gotta, wearing? He's... What? Wait, what? What is that? Is that a Glenn Gilberti mask? No, that's a Disco Inferno mask. Come on. Come oh on, yeah, let's yeah, be real. Sorry. Oh, I look at him it. gyrate. Look at him gyrate. Look at that. Look at that thrust. Stop uh, it. That's uh, gross. Oh, uh, uh, that's for you, Glenn. Yeah. All right. Keep, keep making a dance. Anyway, thanks, Casey, for, thanks for watching, Glenn. Professor, Professor yes, Casey, yes. I need some help here. Let's talk about casket matches, brother. Okay, so casket matches pretty much traditionally. That was, a, that was a cool interview with Kevin. It was, it was cool to see that. By, Byron, Byron. You've got first, 30 minutes left on your phone. First of all, I need to hear what Casey has to say, and I need to not hear as much of Meatloaf breathing and you talking at all. Casey, take it away. All right, so um, when I was a kid, I used to go to a lot of house shows, but I missed one, and it was Ultimate Warrior versus The Undertaker. Oh. It was originally supposed to be. And I think eventually they they redid it so that it was Sid versus The Undertaker in a casket match, okay? Um, because remember when Ultimate Warrior got locked in the coffin, they started doing body bag matches, and people were like, this isn't that visually interesting. So they moved on to coffin matches, casket matches. Um, they actually called them coffin matches at the time, even though it was a casket. They didn't know the difference. Um, neither does Vampiro on commentary, so that's fine. Um, but I asked people, I'm like, how was the match, dude? I'm imagining all this crazy shit. And they're like, they just rolled around inside the casket and punched each other. You couldn't see shit for the whole match. It sucked. So eventually they started to kind of lead up to the casket match that we traditionally saw with the undertaker, which was the casket was used as kind of like a near fall device when you had to like slam the lid shut. Uh, Wing eventually started doing casket matches as well, which they called the Undertaker death match. And our homeboy, Jason the Terrible, depicted here after losing one of those said matches. Yeah. Uh, basically, they'd put you in a really shitty coffin and it would have death match rules. So you'd have to be down for a 10 count inside of the coffin. And sometimes, you know, Mr. Pogo would just set it on fire while you were in it. Dope. Shit happens. Super um, dope. <laughs> what Lucha Underground did that was different that I absolutely loved is they didn't use all of the contrived fucking coffin as a near casket lid near falls. Um, the this casket didn't up, open. Kind of yeah, this casket didn't open until the end of the match. 
<laughs> and they used a very real casket and took some horrendous bumps on it. And I've been inside that casket before. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've been in that casket for sure. And it was a real casket built like a fucking car door. So you can imagine <laughs> how that felt fucking landing on it. Uh, and you also saw it was strong enough to hold big ass Mil Muerte standing on it. So yeah. um, do not think that that was a gimmicked casket by any means. We took pictures uh, with it or with yeah. the other one. No, no, no it one. was this. It was this specific one. This one. That one and, stayed um, backstage at Lucha Underground through the entire run of the show, I believe. That was the one yeah. that was backstage at, at Gorilla, even when they moved to the Ice Temple. The second that they finished this taping, they put it out so everyone can see it in that little waiting area before you would get in for the show. And because the first taping I went to, I saw it and everyone's like, no, dude, that was the craziest match I've ever seen. Let me show you pictures. And they were all busting out their phones and showing the blood splattered all over their seats or on them. Fucking amazing. This is where the show finds its identity as the violent crap that I fucking love in wrestling. <laughs> well, like I said, it did, it did have a little bit of the, the ECW thing, but it, it had a purpose. Like, it made sense. I love Phoenix taking the, the headfirst dive into it and then, you know, Mill ripping at the mask, which oh. is a, an instant signifier that some blood is going to come. Let's talk about headfirst dives a second, Justin, because this match started with Mill Muertes doing a fucking yes. tope suicida. Which, yes. by the way, he was countering the last match, right? When Phoenix. Yeah. Psychology. 100% <laughs> psychology building on other matches. And the real psychology of this was unscrewing the bottom rope because not only does it make it easier to roll a motherfucker in a casket, you can take the ring apart and get a big hook to gouge someone's face in and Which, fucking smack them over the head. Yeah, I wonder if they're booking that, like, how are we going to get this casket in the ring? You know, we got to get the bottom rope off. And, and Mill was like, I'll just beat him with the turnbuckle. But the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is amazing to me, too. And, and it's like, I almost... I felt like Phoenix bladed and went hard way. Like that might have been a double up. I don't know. He definitely bladed. Uh, the but kid can bleed though. The kid is really, yeah. really yeah. good at bleeding. If there's one thing Phoenix knows how to do, and this is not, by the way, even the worst that Phoenix ever bleeds. There's one coming that is so, yeah, well, so oh, much no. worse than this. Well, I've, I've seen Phoenix. Yeah, there's nothing. I've seen Phoenix break. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen Phoenix break his nose right in front of me and bleed a lot more than this, actually, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, like completely ruined the cool. up To your promotion, the first question to him should be, what is your blood type and how many bags do we need to have on standby when we need to put it back and if in you're your gonna, body at the end of this? If you're going to have this cool, awesome mask that we never see again. Half Lucha Underground logo. Half Lucha Underground logo. Let's just completely fucking ruin it in this match, and then we never see it again. God damn. He sh he also shouldn't have worn black. I understand the story significance of it, but come on. White if you're going like that, you, yeah. you wear a lighter color. But um, well, And I think he not. did every other time that, that he's bladed in his entire career. It's like you see Phoenix coming out in a white mask or, or completely mm -hmm. white costume. You, you, you know, know shit's going something now. good. Pentagon came out in a white shirt. The only white half Pentagon, half Pedro shirt. Um, for Lucha Underground, for the Ultima Lucha, mm -hmm. like for his match against Vampiro, he's having a match against Vampiro and he comes out in white and his mask was predominantly white too. You're like, shit's going oh, yeah. Yeah. Plus yeah. we saw, we're just we happy saw fucking light tubes under the ring. Let's not bury the lead. We if we saw <laughs> that shit coming too. But um, I got to I got to tell you guys. Hide your, wife, hide your kids. My favorite, favorite part of this match, absolute favorite, and yeah. one of the best things ever in the history of professional wrestling is Mil Muerte sucking the blood out of Phoenix's head yeah. and spitting it on the cameraman. Oh. And I got to tell you, this wasn't his creation. Um, Vampiro's done it before, of course, including their feud in Puerto Rico, uh, the Ricky Banderas Vampiro feud, which was fucking which amazing. Is excellent. Probably one of my favorites of, of Lucha Libre history, even though there wasn't a whole lot of Lucha into, Libre in that match. Yeah, it carried, it carried over into WSX, into the exploding casket match that I wish we had talked to Kevin about a little bit, especially when he came in on the in our discussion. But um, I didn't think of it until now. God damn it. Him, How we can, like, we'll have him back to that. How do you get bring him in. on a show where you're going to have an exploding casket. 
Oh, dude, I, I it was awesome too. I, I, uh, I, 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 the the pioneer of sucking the blood out of someone's head and spitting yeah. it into your face is someone you guys might not expect. It was actually classy Freddie Blassie. Um, when he used to be, it was when he used to be vampire Fred Blassie as a heel in the California territories where he was such a bloodthirsty heel chewing people's foreheads up that they put a fucking muzzle on him when he wrestled. <laughs> Tremendous. Um, Fred Blassie was the shit pioneer allegedly really gave a woman a heart attack doing this spot and she died seeing it. Oh my it. God. And now Mil Muertes doing it on Lucha Underground. I bet that cameraman wasn't expecting that shit. No, I don't think he was. I'll tell you what, one of my other favorite things in this match was the introduction of a new character that we see pop up quite uh, often down the line in Lucha Underground, which is uh, the announce table. And this announce table is not your regular announce table. This is a starring announce table because this motherfucker never breaks. They brought that shit from Japan, bro. Oh, How my God. It is made out of Japanese oak, clearly. Yeah. That's a <laughs> How much you want to bet the production crew, like the set crew, the TV people, saw the wrestlers get near the table and like, all right, they didn't think like, anything of it. Then they start slamming each other on it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like they know that's not a gimmicks table, right? Not only does it still have the rails on the bottom, it's like three inches thicker, it's short and stocky, yeah. and it's it's never going to break. Yeah, I think they yeah. broke it one time, right? Was is that right, Casey? Like it actually Yeah, but once, they they made it, it like a fucking superpower thing that when it happened though, like there was build to them breaking it when <laughs> they finally the broke it. Near the ring, it someone's gonna get slammed through it. Yeah. yeah, I remember correctly. It was Matanza that finally broke it. I think. I want to say that's a slab. Right. That's a slab of uh, plywood. I, no, I, no, I remember uh, Evie, twenty mil when he was talking to us. Ev Dub was watching this uh, on the big control center, all the, all the cameras on the screens, and he was thinking this is like he was getting nervous. You know, he's in charge, so he's like liable for stuff, and he's like, this is either. <laughs> best thing ever or the worst idea of all time as Mills just spitting blood out into the way. I, I, I mean, say, I gotta imagine the lawyer was standing very close to Evie Dub, repeatedly just nudging him like, you can't like do Eric, this. Eric, Stop. no, like, Eric. Yeah. Stop, Eric. No, but you know what? This isn't um, what you told me was gonna happen today, guys. He's like, Listen, there's gonna be a new you next week, just so you know. Lawyer. Separated the wheat from the chink when it came to fans, though, because you notice there's a lot of fans in the audience of this show that you never see again and a lot of our friends that went to all the tapings they're fucking there yeah they're fucking there because we see vic we see both vics i think we see yeah. Jaime in the audience we see a lot of our Machetes. friends yeah, yeah. Machetes is, uh, yeah Machetes is there yes. all the a lot of the og fans vito el rudo's in there uh, we johnny see a ace is in there ruben johnny ruben. ace always johnny's ruben. awesome mom you know ruben who makes the masks, does tattoo. Yep. And we saw yeah. Tattoo Ruben wearing the mask in the audience, too. They and really established the actual danger that exists in the stands in just attending the show as a fan. Like, yeah. honestly, I wasn't there for this one, but we were all there for, well, Byron, were you there for the second one, the Matanza Mil Muertes one? Maybe. I was. I felt like I was going to get fucked up at ringside, and I actually almost was. I had to jump out of the way of those fucking the, – the little accordion wheel things that go under the fucking yeah. casket. Mil Muertes kicked them, and it shot out like a fucking skateboard, and I had to, like, jump out of the way. It was fucking nuts, dude. Should have taken it. Should have taken it. Well, the thing there is – There are a few people <laughs> in Lucha Underground that – Casey and I started planning exit strategies or defense yeah. strategies when they would wrestle. Well, Not, we uh, had Jeremiah had to was one of them, Mr. Jeremiah Crane. Yeah. Uh, we had a rule, yeah. which we, we always used to say on the show, was if you go to a literal room taping or any show and Ricky Banderas goes, well, he didn't even go move. move. If he's coming in your direction with somebody, just fucking move. No he he looked me in the eyes once and said, move, and I peed a little, dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the thing I don't blame you. I peed for you. That's Ricky Banderas under a hood wrestling on a show after a multiple decade career. But it doesn't matter because he was 100% mill. Moretes, who was just someone without regard for life. Yeah. It? And so and now we so bring friendly it. outside of the hood, too. Yes. But man, as soon as that he's thing a nice on, oh my God. When he's not mess with him, bro. The waters parted. 
Except season four, yeah. all the new fans, people got trampled. Oh, yeah, yeah, they deserved it. They deserved it. Yeah, a few people look, that got chair That's the highlight especially, season four. Especially in season four, too, because at the beginning of season four, they were banding the chairs together. So there were people who got higher rows <laughs> oh. of chairs kind of crushed well, thing to do. It shows. This is the rule with Mil Muertes. He tells you to move, and if you don't move, it's on you. He's still well, going to do what he was one section do. in the Ice Temple that was like a bowling alley, like for like three or four weeks straight, every taping. And they were doing like a grip of tapings a week, like six shows a week. Like, the, it was the bowling alley, and when Mill would come out, somebody was getting thrown into that every single time, and people would show up brand new and just not move. For some reason, they kept putting all the newbies there, or they kept picking to go there because everyone like, else knew to, better. To be fair, it's a good thing that I didn't make it there because I would have gone, right, Ricky, I give you permission to throw someone into me. Oh, dear Lord. You I'll probably would not have enjoyed that. I would have no, no. I I loved it every second of it. No, when you were yeah, impaled on the floor. Remember when Zach showed up and we're like, hey, Zach, is your first switch on underground taping? When a guy in a mask named Mil Muertes, he's built like, like two trees tied together. When he told you to move, run. And when it happened, we didn't see him for like 15 minutes. He disappeared. <laughs> Hey, yeah, he listens. And then I He's saw outside. and I saw the video and he was standing behind our friend Kevin the whole time. <laughs> which was amazing. The uh, monster Kevin Foot, was it? No, no, no. no cartoon no, Kevin. Too. Cartoon oh, Kevin. Cartoon uh, Kevin. Uh, cartoonist. Amazing. Look, as you guys can tell, this is absolutely one of our favorite episodes of Lucha Underground. I'm glad we finally got to it because maybe we can find enough gumption to keep doing a podcast about a show that's been off the air for <laughs> two years out Check of seeing this. It makes me really finish. happy. What are you going to say, Byron? I got a motorcycle. The finish is great. And I think the finish still holds up today. And the double stomp rope walk. This, I really feel that Aerostar saw the finish of this match and is like, fuck it. He's doing a half a rope walk and double stomp. I'm going to just slip in a full post to post rope walk in my match. My opening match, just to fuck with us, <laughs> which is awesome. But they still, they still both played great. And honestly, yeah. you know, People are gonna more people are gonna watch this match, and I, I, they clipped it out of the show and ran it on YouTube even for, for Lucha Underground Dude. for a while, and it's just phenomenal. It's, okay, this got um, something like four and a half stars from Dave Meltzer for Jesus. a casket match. Which, if you look at casket, that doesn't happen. Especially, Not very often, no. I think the highest rated one would have been Taker and Sean at the Rumble, but Sean gets fucked up in that match, okay. so it's not quite a high rating because after after a certain point he's in pain when he hits his back on that bump yeah um now, but but mystical storyline wise casey is this supposed to recharge the rock and the powers here what what's the deal with the rock in this finish how does this play into the mythology of lucha underground okay so it's supposed to make mil muerte stronger every time he dies and so when he comes back, he's got better looking gear and he's yeah. got skeletons. Oh, that's uh, right. He comes uh, out of the pajamas, doesn't he? This is this the, gets the him pajamas. Out of the I love the colors. pajamas. I love the pajamas. I would mm. always love the pajamas. Never, never the pajamas. Never that. It looks such a good throwback. I love all the that pajamas. awesome concept art they had of the character. And then they put him in fucking pajamas. I was happy. Yeah, with everything else the, after this, the second, the second, incarnation that he gets and just murders everyone after this is the concept art mill where it is yes, uh, down, down to his street clothes being the suit that they drew in the yeah. concept art it's, uh, it's amazing it's great how they work and it's great like I love the I love the procession it's not a funeral procession Stryker calls it something something it, it's a day of the dead procession it's a day of the dead procession which is Dear not on Halloween death. it's November 2nd yeah <laughs> it's two uh, days later yeah, those uh, of you that I love if that. you've ever gone to a Day of the Dead thing, I I sure have at Alvera Street, and they fucking rule, and they're they're a lot like this. Um, Doesn't it um, sometimes start the thirty first Street to the fifth? It's like a five yeah, day. It, it definitely does. Like they're they're saying it was only on the second was a little off. I know a lot of people celebrated on the first as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like that's what I mean, midnight of the 31st, you know, like yeah, so it's technically it's, the first. Yeah. It's, well, it's a week of leaving offerings and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. listen, if, if you guys want to know why we watch Lucha Underground, please go watch season one, episode nine, grave or 19, sorry, uh, grave consequences. <laughs> Absolutely worth it. I got to get to the shout outs real quick, guys. Um, 
Yep. I got to give shout outs to, to my homeboy, Gabe Smith, who not only uh, started listening to the show recently, he's a big NWA power fan. He's a fan of Thunder Rosa's, probably one of her oh, biggest yeah. fans. And uh, he's been listening to the show recently. He was my set medic. He was the guy who stuck a stick up my nose every day for <laughs> freaking the last two months to test me to make sure I could live through that freaking show I did. And but we won't even talk about the thermometer. I hope you yeah. first. Well, I mean, yeah, there's there's a reason why he would snap the gloves every time before he did it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so big shout out to Gabe Smith. So not only has he been oh, yeah. listening to the show, but he also left us uh, a review, and I'll get to those in a minute. Um, I got to give a shout out to Straight Out of the Bodega, who's been retweeting us. They're another one of the awesome shows here on yeah. the Lucha Central Podcast Network. Please, please, please check them out as well. Paula O'Keefe. Uh, yes, we have some new merch coming soon. I just I've been super busy, but now that I'm not, I will try to figure it out and maybe even get see if we can get Kev to do something through Mass Republic for us. Uh, Paula, Paula, I'll, I'll make you. You, a you can't buy the new merch board. until you buy the KC merch. So teespringcom <laughs> slash Bazooka KC. Well, Paula's still rocking the uh, MMM Show 100s shirt, and she wants us to get all the way to 200 so we can make a new one. But uh, oh, yeah, then, I'm not we'll even get sure I have over merch because that's going to be uh, a solid year away from now. Yeah. Um, let's see. Maria Sanchez gets a huge shout out. Mass Republic uh, and Business of the Business get a big shout out for, you know, Mass Republic has been retweeting us a lot, which is pretty much Kevin's handle. But, you know, we have the Lucha Central Podcast Network handle that does our tweeting and has to do it. Kevin does not have to, but he still does it anyway. So we love him. Bad Ombre, uh, Goatse, Zeus, the whole team over at uh, Markout Mania. Catch those guys Saturday mornings for all of your fun wrestling nostalgia and current wrestling talk. Those guys are awesome. Um, Zeus eats circus peanuts. Let me read some of these newer Zeus. ones. I don't know if we've read this review yet. Oh, from, that uh, oh, is the best shit, one. A, yeah. a piece of shit. Pray for Mojo. I'll, Fuck that I'll, guy. I will. I will get to some. Uh, some. Here actually, we go. This one I actually did my job this week with iTunes. By the way. Well, well I'm reading them now because I didn't think you were going to. So. <laughs> I actually. Yeah. Five stars from Sweet Daddy Diddy. These guys yes. are awesome, awesome show. Love the banter. Wrestling is probably the greatest form of entertainment ever, and these guys do it justice. Wow. Those are the best uh, lies yeah. I have heard in Justice, ages. last name of Sid, fuck yeah, and the man, the master, the ruler of the world. I am so glad that P. Diddy listens to our show, dog. I yeah. never really liked his music. But I, was I don't think it's the same the band. P. Diddy. I hate to break it to you. I like this um, one from PR4 Mojo. Okay, first uh, also, of all, it's Pray for no, Mojo. We got to get it clean. We got to get it clean. Hold on. Okay. Pray for Mojo. All right. Five stars. First of all, this is a five-star review. And if all five-star reviews came like this, maybe we don't want to be five stars. I don't know. Anyway, the, the title of this review is Shows Used to Be Longer Than the Irishman. Not sure who has this much time on their hands, but apparently some people do. Apparently they've shortened the episodes now, but... I'll have to take their word for it because, you know, fool me once, shame on you, you get it. This is really what this says, too. Have you have never listened to a full episode, but they do have great guests. A must listen for any Lucha Underground fans who have, say, six hours to spare. Justin, me, Byron, and Jimmy are all great guys. Five stars, exclamation point. Josh Pillow. You, you could have given a star for every host, but for apparently only Justin, me, Byron, and Jimmy are great guys. There's yeah, no you know mention why? of Casey. What the hell's going hey, on there? You know what? If I could, if I, if I may, Justin, you know what else is longer than the Irishman? My dick, and they can suck it. Wow. Ooh. All right, here's another one. Five stars from Mikey Freedom. Great podcast. Mikey. Thanks for the content with a big muscle arm. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Mikey. I was scared great. by the name. I love I love it when people put uh, emojis in their reviews. More of those, please. Dude, do you think Mikey Freedom is Freedom from CNC Music Factory? Because yeah. he was pretty muscular. Yes. No, but I think we might know who this one is from, too. Five stars from Pauly Slim, our boy. Hey, 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 hey. He also says, it's War and Peace in podcast form is the title of his review. 
This is the go-to podcast for any fan of Lucha Underground and the wrestling industry in general. I love it. It was still a good review, but he's right. The show is kind of long. The sometimes. king of carne asada fries, Paulie. You know yeah. what? Paul, yeah. you, Thanks, make Paulie. Hungry. you make Appreciate me hungry you, all the time with your fries pictures. We Paulie's going to stop listening, though, if we don't get Marky DeMoth on again soon, because I know that's one of his favorites. All right, I got to do some wall of fame, wall of shame time, guys. And yeah. then we'll get to another break before we talk about all the things in AEW I want to talk about today. Oh, shit. Um, oh. There's a lot of AEW Lucha Underground news, so we really got to do it. But anyway, Wall of Fame. We got Tony Khan, Karrion Cross, Roman Reigns, Casey over there for hooking up the Storm Shadow figures that sadly aren't going to come on time. Robert Stonebrand, which Byron put on there, but I still agree with it, so I'm leaving it on there. I'm putting Marcelo up two Bielsa. new... I'm putting up two new additions. Should have done this one last week. I'm putting Denise Salcedo on the wall of fame because of her love of donuts. Fight me if you don't like it. Um, and then my second addition, my brand new addition to the wall of fame, and this one is not going away. I'm adding Sonny Kiss to the wall of fame for graduating college. Congratulations, Sonny. Congrats, We're all Sonny. very proud of you. Uh, we love the push that you're starting to get on AEW as well. Keep it going. Don't let anybody freaking stop you, brother. Oh, we know how hard you've been working one more thing about sunny um uh i mean sunny's always been a huge star in our eyes but sunny just propelled eight sunny and joey propelled aew's main event to over a million viewers okay yeah okay he's like he's he's a rating straw and sunny Sunny kids should be tweeting your welcome to people right now so, you know, I, that's another feather in his cap and his push, his his story just got started, too, which is great. And I'll be honest, the feather in ours, too, because the second we we saw Sonny and especially you, Byron, that that was like it was a no brainer to us that that Sonny has uh, a thing that is very unique and that is worked on very hard and is executed very well. And we all loved it. It's a great thing. I won't say that Sonny doesn't have some some issues where he's a little green in spots. Um, Mm -hmm. but he's still fairly new to the business. And I think that he's finally getting the chance to work with the performers that are going to elevate that game almost immediately Mm -hmm. because, Mm -hmm. you know, he's got the physical ability to, to pick up all the stuff that's missing so fast and you can already see it starting to happen. Um, so we're very, very we we eagerly await the heel turn. So he's, he's talking about, I don't even know. Wow. That'd be amazing. I think he'd be so good. I think he's so good as a heel. Not for a while though, but like he's still no, no, not for a while. But you know, it's like a build. That would be almost like, a Hogan yeah. level we'll see, heel you know, turn. Yeah, because I, I can't, I can't even imagine Sonny going heel. But I guess that. Oh, yeah, where he's like all player. the booty popping and all the ass shaking. I did it for the money, brother. They, they do have Rob Holford glove. They do have the back of the beach. But Sonny's talked about how um, he's still fighting against his dance background, which makes yeah. his movements more fluid than more fighting, like. Um, but I mean, when he was, when he was doing his work on, on dark, I loved his tag team with Dustin Rhodes. Because, yeah. You know, just, you know, that was invaluable, like mentorship. Dude, like, plus absolutely. it's fucking Sonny Kiss teaming with gold dust. That rules. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, like, Nothing the, wrong with that. Is, like, he's like one of the biggest, biggest, like, I think, um, acquisitions EW could have taken someone who was under contract mm-hmm. from WWE as, as an agent producer. Yeah, I have I'm, I'm going to get to him too because we're going to still yeah. talk about AEW, oh. but I got to finish the Wall of Shame. Go for you got it. anything for Wall of Fame, Case? All right, let me get to um, Wall of Shame. No, 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 no. Wall of Shame right now. David Lagana, Jeffrey Briggs, and JT Wilcox and those idiots who think they're going to trademark Booch Underground. And go back and listen to Kev if you want to hear about idiots and trademarks. Uh, Velveteen Dream still on there. Impact for not getting verifications for their wrestlers. Come on, blue check marks. Impact, it ain't that hard. Uh, Brit Wrestling, Pedos, Predos, and Pervs. Tessa Blanchard still on there for phoning it in. Retribution still going to be on there until they find some way to pay that off. That doesn't piss me off, which I seriously doubt is going to happen. Uh, UFC for Avengers and Predator for that shitty 2.01 oh, update. Oh god, still oh. Uh, uh, two or three still bad. It's it still can't play. I played it then every time I got through. It just I, I've me been. Up. I like the new stuff they added, and it's getting a little bit better. But I'm going to give it another update before I really get back into it hardcore. Ricochet, brother, until you cut that promo, you are still on. The this freaking wall of shame. Uh, <laughs> Amazon and Hasbro for delaying the aforementioned reason for Casey getting on the wall of fame. Yeah. And uh, our buddy Colt on AMS, Eric Mutter, still on there. 
unfamiliar. Dead to Byron, clearly dead to Byron. Though I retweeted him today. I, I unblocked him from the MMM show account and retweeted him because I actually saw a tweet from my personal account of his that I liked. So I gave him the love. And you can go back in and block him if you want, Byron. Um, I'll get drunk later and do it. What's the password? Austin Theory. So, and I, it's a shame that Kev's not here because Kev would appreciate this one. My new addition to the wall of shame this week is Spot Fest Radio for DisneyLuchaDashMask.com for the $30 price tag and also for calling fans of Mass Republic. What did they say? They called them uh, uneducated. Did you see how many fans they've got on their account? How many? Four. Four yeah. followers. Yeah, fuck Spot Fest Radio. Sorry, guys. You picked the wrong people to fuck with. Should I yeah. bleep their name out? Because they uh, might I'm, actually get a rub from us. Yeah, oh, I don't bleep care. It. Bleep it. I don't care. You can do whatever you... No, don't bleep their name out. I want people to know that they're douchebags. Is, it, is this them. shit Wow's new... Please, uh, one please. Go and follow them. I hope all of TwitWow's followers follow them, too. Give oh, them a big, follow. huge push so that all the douchebags can go and follow them and not follow us anymore. Go for it. Be my guest. If anybody who's listening to this show actually wants to follow those douchebags, go for it. They they hate Lucha Libre. They hate what Mass Republic is doing. They hate good Lucha masks. They hate all the sweet shit that Getting we guys so, paid during a fucking pandemic. If you like them, please don't listen to our show. Go to them. What are you saying, Byron? I know we had a commercial, and then we also do like an extended 15-minute promo every time. But these are not your regular vanity masks. These are sewn together like an actual Luchador's mask. They have the quality. Also, with the quality, they have the layers of fabric. You can also just buy a filter yourself and just put the filter in. Well, and yeah, and he was saying all sorts of stuff about how they're not CDC this, that, and the other thing. It's like, yeah, neither are the ones you not, get at Target, yeah. bro. They're not in 95 yeah. masks. No one's claiming that they are. Get a filter exactly. That's just put it in here and put it on your face and you're good. But that's the thing. They don't there's they don't want us to buy those N95 masks because as the greatest superpower in the world, we don't have enough to go around in a pandemic still. Yeah, look. And also with, with this it, this it is two layers and it will do a good job of stopping at going out and that's the what they're trying to stop. So yeah, it's not the, the whole perfect, thing is you wear a mask to not affect everybody else. Listen, anybody else got anything for the wall of shame? We got to take Austin another theory. Break. Austin Theory, good lord. All right. Teenagers. I was hoping we could avoid him, but... So you can either be a person who points out, as a wrestling fan, all the problems in the world and just lament that there are problems and complain, or you can look at something that needs a solution and find it. Just get one of these things. Yeah, just get a, get a, get a thing. Put the thing on there. All right, guys, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back. And we're going to discuss a lot of things going on with AEW what? now that affect what Lucha shit? Underground stars left and right from different I... angles and variations and kind of my thoughts on where AEW should go. And I'm sure plenty of Byron's thoughts, if you guys can handle them. We'll be right back. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. All right, guys. Uh, wall of shame accomplished. Lucha Underground Grave Consequences accomplished. I got to talk about AEW. Uh, we've talked a little bit about Thunder Rosa, but... Yeah. Thunder Rosa single-handedly exposed AEW. 100%. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if anybody really understood... And I don't want to be mean because you, you guys know I love Brandy and Brandy's been awesome. And, and I, I think that Britt Baker is going to be a star. But Thunder Rosa really exposed single-handedly just how awful AEW's women's division has been. You know, I love Evie too, but she hasn't looked great. Uh, uh, just in general, the Nyla yeah. Rose thing doesn't really work for me. But like but Evie, Evie was... 
she's probably running at like 70 percent of what we are what we're seeing her in lucha underground now and in the tag tournament that she was in she and diamante looked like way better than anyone else in that tag tournament right and and here's my thing here's my thing the the other thing i want to say too is that the serena deep match for thunder rosa is the best women's match in AEW history um and it's not the match that she had with Sheeta, which is another slight problem to me because that match was great. Um, the little bit of a crowd that they had there didn't get into it as much as the, the deep match. But part of it is the fact that Thunder Rosa was the one with all the story. It's the other thing that really exposed AEW. She came in. She was the first Mexican women NWA champ. Like there was a story to it. There was purpose behind what she was doing. It wasn't complicated. It was still in the AEW world of being an athletic representation of, you know, somebody who's actually good at what they do. Um, but like it just seriously exposed some things. Now, the match with Sheeta was exactly what it was supposed to be because they worked. Sheeta's style. Sheeta was the one kind of calling the shots there a little bit, uh, and, and Thunder Rosa was giving it to her, which was great. You know, she was Thunder Rosa did exactly what she was supposed to do: give the their champion uh, a hell of a fight, a great match, and and put their champion over after a hard fought battle. But it was very, uh, it was very deliberate, like late '90s Japanese kind of style of. Of women's match, which I loved, but at the same time, wasn't quite as exciting as the Deep match. And it still, still great. Probably went a little bit longer because of the match with um, before it. Well, and, and, yeah, if they got extra time, I love that they got extra time. But that whole thing was too long. They could have shortened the entire <laughs> show by an hour and been better yeah. off. But yeah. that's not on either of those ladies. They they did fine with the time that they were given. Uh, and I and I don't think that either of them was gassing out or anything like that. I think it was specifically planned to be a slower match by mm -hmm. I think she'd have gassed a couple of times. Maybe. But here's the other thing that it kind of exposes yeah. to me. You know, Dustin has been, we were talking about Dustin a little bit. The guy's a saint. Uh, I know Thunder Rosa absolutely loves him. I know yes. Sonny loves him. You know, the people that we know have said nothing but good things about him. Who they haven't mentioned, and I'm not saying they're trying to bury the guy, but I'm reading between the lines a little bit here is Kenny. Kenny Omega is, I think, the linchpin at AEW that is just absolutely being used wrong. Him booking the women's division, him having Sheeta as a pet project to do his thing with, like, what he's been doing with the women's division is off. What he's been doing with his storyline and where he's been going is off. I think now is the time to put the belt on Kenny Omega. Just give people exactly what they always thought that they were going to get from AEW. People are going to be pissed off about it at first. It's the obvious thing to do, but they should do it because they need a fucking baseline. Right now, AEW is like WCW before Hogan came in. They're nobody. And then even when Hogan came in, still nobody. It wasn't until the fucking heel turn and the NWO and that's what AEW is missing. They're missing something more exciting about the overall product. They're missing was, something in the world of what's going on. Um, I can say that it feels to me like cold drop gimmicks. So there's yeah. not more of there's not a lot of like pre story or something leading into like it's just like oh this person's a fucking alien from outer space and it's like what. The but so this you've episode, got your head. it's like what? <laughs> look, this episode, this episode of Dynamite this past week was better than the pay per view. I thought Absolutely. because of the fact that it it moved things forward. The storyline started to become interesting. You saw really, and this is the thing that that the Raw after a pay per view has been failing to do for years now is like it made you feel like what happened at the pay per view meant something. That like these yeah. things actually do go somewhere. The 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 logic behind the episode after the pay per view was better than anything that led into it by a long stretch. And I can only hope they keep playing into it. Oh, we're well, we're getting there was a major major Thunder Rosa announcement for next week's Dynamite that we should get into. Yeah, yeah. let's let's talk about it. She so, is going to go ahead, Case. I'll let you do. Yeah, it. um, she's going to defend the NWA Championship against Eva Lee. So, Lucha Underground fans, here the fuck you go. 
but see, there's like for I have I have high hopes, and I, I really hope it's going to be a great match. But you also have it's another example of AEW wanting a showcase match with Thunder Rosa. You know, they want to have a great women's wrestling match, and they're throwing one of the least AEW talent. right. But into, yeah, I don't I, I agree with that. Angry. But but also at the same time, you got to look at the the fact that. On paper, this should be absolute fire. I mean, Eva Lisa has mm -hmm. been wrestling longer than Thunder Rosa. She is the and that's one more thing out. veteran the veteran in the match. match. Sorry, the, the previous best match was with uh, someone who wasn't actually an AEW wrestler. In now, um, who yeah, now so, apparently <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. So it's it's like going, I mean, well, if, look, at least she's doing <laughs> enough with them to make sure that you know the credibility stays with her and with AEW, I think. And if and if her and Evie can have a fire match, which I think they can, and I always thought they could, but it's funny because in Lucha Underground, it was like, yeah, you want to see Thunder Rosa versus Evie so that Evie can elevate Thunder Rosa. I yeah. think that that no. is clearly yeah. reversed now. And it's yeah. very interesting to see that somehow now Thunder Rosa, being this outsider who's wrestled in smaller promotions, was was the new kid on the block in Lucha Underground and trying to learn from all the boys there. Like mm -hmm. somehow Thunder Rosa is the one who's got her own promotion, which, by the way, Mission Pro is uh, uh, a week past them Friday. Uh, and and I need to uh, I need to watch Red Velvet on the Mission Pro card, just so you guys are all aware. Oh, That's Red Velvet. Be, yeah, I got. Uh, I I uh, used to watch her um, at live shows in. Uh, and uh, why didn't, why didn't, didn't you take me to these shows, Byron? Look, uh, uh Thunder Rosa, so I, just, th I just want I just want to say I know what you're talking about. Well, Thunder Rosa has offered flat out to be my wingman now. And Thunder Rosa, if you're yes. listening to this, I need you to, to make a thing happen with Red Velvet, please. No, she's anyway. with Briscoe. You should look on her Instagram. <laughs> We don't, we should we don't talk about that. <laughs> wait, wait, which which Briscoe? Is it Gerald Briscoe? Is he the one? It's, it's it's an impact. He used to work for Impact Briscoe. It's not the one who's on a No, it's the yeah. It's, it's anyway, not the one that if that I wanted to hook you, you'd be hooked. <laughs> things change, Byron, and things so, change so in my <laughs> favor. Period. Yeah. Anyway, Mission Pro is coming up this week, so definitely go to their website, check it out. Um, mm -hmm. I believe they're doing a pay-per-view thing, too. i got to figure that out because I want to definitely watch Mission Pro this week. <laughs> anyway, Thunder Rosa versus Evil East uh, should be fire. I'm almost positive that Thunder Rosa is going to retain simply because she's announced another title defense that happens after that, which I think was kind of a weird thing. Oh, that's <laughs> NWA, yeah, that's though. They time, do that. Right? Like, they change. They've done that yeah. since the Crockett days. It's it's uh, fine. But 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 also to NWA's credit, there'd be times when they would do that and then take the belt off of somebody and then they would show yeah. up and do the match without the belt. So it could still happen. I, I don't imagine that Evie will be taking Thunder Rosa's belt, though. I think that will firmly stay with Thunder Rosa. But what we're really hoping for here is not some surprising finish. Uh, what we need is another surprising match. We need a great <laughs> match out of these guys. And I'm going to go back to when uh, Thunder Rosa wrestled Taya Valkyrie off on the Indies somewhere in California. I don't even know where it was. I honestly think that that was the moment that Thunder Rosa turned the corner. Working with Taya, I think, saw gave her an opportunity to see as, as a female performer how she could step it up and where she could really excel, what parts of Lucha Libre to bring into regular yeah. American-style wrestling. Uh, because though Thunder Rosa is from Mexico, she is mostly trained indie style here in the States, and she's added Lucha Libre to her style. Didn't she a lot start of people wrestling think it's the other way around? In America. She moved yeah. to America and then started yeah. wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a little, a lot of people don't realize that. She may not want people to realize that, so she gets the credibility as, as both, because she can do both now. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's part of it. Kenny Omega should be champion, in my opinion. I just think that that would really solve half the problems. They need a baseline. They need a reset. Uh, Kenny on a singles run, which I feel like is kind of where they're going, is great. And hopefully I they stay on that path. I, I, keeps them away from the women's division. I feel Let's that. The race. But I, I, I feel, and he even dropped like that, you know, he, he mentioned that everyone wanted him to do that. He talked about it and he cut a good promo and he's getting better. I feel that Kenny as, as a booker agent and as a talent, was he was special in America, even though he's Canadian, 
he was special as an import from Japan. And I think that covered some of his weaknesses, but he also had extra shine on him. And he, and I feel in a way it was smart to give him a high profile tag run, but he got without all of the responsibility on him. He got to learn that American audience and he got to learn working TV. He didn't know how to work TV and who knows if, who knows? I mean, half the guys don't hit their finish to the hard cam anyway, which I he got to well, um, <laughs> he got to heal up a little bit too, which is I think the but, real reason. But it's also it's slow long term storytelling, and it it's compelling. It makes sense, and and I mean, and I feel, and at the end of the day, you know, the simple thing is like he should be champ. That'd be great, and that's what we all wanted with AEW. But, um, but we need but we I, need, I, that I, I the, we well. need that on the we need that on the big belt. It he doesn't have, have a yeah. baseline yet. I mean, what's the baseline? Chris Jericho it, right now? Uh, he's he's, he's also got the Triple A championship. See, I, I yeah. And is I, it Moxley, I, I who's more of a hardcore guy now and, and kind of a retired mid tier WWE guy? I think it has to be Kenny. Like, you need a baseline. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I also think they're not jumping to the end of that story right away. And I'm looking forward to hopefully he makes the beeline for it and he gets, like, he even tweeted after his uh, match with. Um, with Moxley, some people have brought this up on Twitter. Like, oh yeah, you won, but I survived, so I won. That means, you know, well, he's gonna and, but see, here's here's my thing. I don't know that they can afford to wait for a payoff. I think they hot shot it onto Kenny so that it pays off for someone else later, so that it pays off for the whole promotion later. I think I mean, that their time to dick around has just expired. I just don't think they have that yeah. kind of leeway anymore. Well, you have Archer in a month. That's going to be a Moxley win. <laughs> I don't know how much of a story there is there, but I feel like there's going to be. If I'm, no, if put I'm, it on Archer and have Kenny take it off of him. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I feel like whatever's going on in the next month, it's the story of Kenny getting the title should be ongoing. But I feel like that that uh, also translated to his booking in the women's division. Like, oh, half their talent were imports, and half the appeal was here's a style that's imported, and they lost half of that. And also, that doesn't necessarily, once a shine, once it becomes normal. Everything in the women's division feels like a bad pet project of Kenny's, except for the Britt Baker and Swole thing. And I don't think that that was no. him. I think that that was other people that came up with that. That's, that's, Jer that's Jericho also working with Britt using his WCW conspiracy theory, character, which was amazing. I, I thought it was Vince Russo. And I thought that's ah, did that much. You know, it, was, it was fucking garbage. And it no, was the worst no. shit ever. And, and the whole Brit. I liked thing, it. The whole see, but it. see, that's all accidental. The whole Brit thing. Uh, her, you know, she wasn't supposed to have. But that that's character. fine. You're supposed to run with accidental things. Swole was another person who just came in to work a match and had a great character and got over. And so, you know, and then they worked well together. That's all right. Accidental. Sure. And now they need to match Brit up with Thunder Rosa or someone else so that she can actually get good at wrestling too, because she's yeah, a great yeah, character, but she needs a little work. That was All right. So a couple other quick things I want to talk about with AEW um, and leading kind of back to Luke Underground a little bit. Uh, the Matt Hardy, Sammy Guevara thing was uh, kind of hard to watch. Uh, um, I, I like them sending Matt out to just basically apologize for it and say, I'm going to take a little break now, guys. He had to apologize to his wife in front of the world. I love it. And yeah, I love good. it. It was all sincere and straight. And there was no run in. There was no like, oh, we got to get heat on the guy. Have <laughs> so just playing him. Yeah. Chair. That's what WWE and would Sammy do. And Sammy Guevara, yeah. I think, look, the, the kid's talented and he's survived a whole lot of mishaps at this point. He's had some weird up and downs in his very early career. So. I think he'll survive this too, but they need to cool him for a little bit and then find a way to reintroduce him back in in a, in a positive light, finally. Let him do a comedy gimmick. Let him do something a little easier and just kind of cruise through it. You know, he, he needs the, the Orange Cassidy rub next time. Um, I'm happy so, that Matt Which brings me to two, two last things I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about the one you would think would be bigger first, but it's not that big to me. Miro uh, makes debut... Uh, formerly known as Rusev. Uh, I liked it. I thought it worked. I'm interested to see where it's going. They got me. They, they got me interested. That's all yeah. they were supposed to do, right? Exactly. I, I feel I feel he's lining himself up as the best man, at the, the best at Twitch video games. He's already penciled in to challenge Kenny for the belt via Street Fighter 2 matches. 
And I'm, but I'm disappointed that he, and I'm disappointed that him and Moxley are not in the G1. I feel that, you know. Well, look, like, that is what it is. You're not going to have that right now. They can't travel and do both. They're either in AEW or they're in right. New Japan right now. You can't really fly around the world doing wrestling. But, but, Rusev but I, truly I will say is, this. Hmm. Shit, we lost Justin. Rusev truly is the best man because he fucked on a tank once. That's and true. none of us can say that we did. So on a tank, in a tank, around a tank, I, come on. Fish tank? Yeah. See, and Fish also, tank. He came in and did the glass ceiling brass ring WWE promo, and maybe he has more right to do it than most. I'm tired of those, and hopefully they just... I was, just saying, I was really tired of the whole kind of... I, I, I'm very tired with AEW kind of... I you didn't even watch the show. Doing, doing guys. Yeah, but I watch certain parts of it, and every time well, they sign well, a WWE guy, they bring it in, and then it's like some like contrived like, shot of Vincent Man thing. It's, it's not even at the level of WCW versus uh, WWE, and it's just getting really tiresome. I'm I'm more excited. Uh, I'm more excited about Miro than I was about Moxley. I'll, I'll say that I feel oh, like yeah. he's a better fit in general. So I'm interested to see where it goes. There's more potential to see what he can do for sure. I, I, I I'm into death match shit. I was stoked for okay. Moxley. I was stoked for Moxley, but to me, it's Moxley New Japan. That's where I love his stuff the most. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. His match with Suzuki was tremendous. Mm. Yeah, and is she? He, he did some good stuff yeah. in there. I just don't. I, I I don't feel like it's going where I would like to see it go in AEW with Moxley. I, I I don't think he should go away or anything. I just don't think he should be champ anymore. I think they could do better right now. Um, all right. The last thing I want to talk about, which kind of leads to the last thing I want to talk about is jungle boy, Jack Perry. Um, I don't know what it is. That guy has turned a friggin' corner. He is absolutely one of my favorite wrestlers right now. He looks so damn crisp. His spots are great. The moments he had with Phoenix in that match were the best wrestling of the week. Um, by far of every single thing that was on television, Jack Perry was my favorite wrestler. Uh, this week out of like the 70 matches I watched. What was your question? So friggin' good. What was your question um, and come, during his match? If you're asking me something, that's never going to work because you're super glitchy on my end. Uh, he, the question he was asking was, did I leave it on slow-mo when Luchasaurus was in? And um, <laughs> the answer is no. Just, Justin asked, how long has Jungle Jack Boy Perry been wrestling? And I said, since he was like 10 years old and I was at the match. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's been wrestling since he was a little kid, which is fucking amazing. To Go ahead, and he's phenomenal now. I, I, I just, I really like it. I also really liked uh, Eddie Kingston coming out and, and trying to get the Pinta Phoenix handshake to happen oh and everything that transpired there. Eddie, Loved Eddie. It. Don't fucking do it. We want the singles Pentagon run. God damn it. Yeah. It's you know, but this is perfect, perfect storytelling yeah. to set that up. I mean, it's great. And we Eddie. want the Phoenix singles run. Yes, I'm most definitely. We want great. Pinto to be in some other tag team so he doesn't blow up. We want Phoenix to actually get a good singles run while he's hot. Phoenix. Dude, all and you got to do is get a win in 30 seconds and you don't have to worry about him blowing up. It's the ultimate sure. warrior yeah. math equation. Come on. I love Eddie coming in, cutting a great promo. Just in a Lucha blog, I think even pointed, made a funny tweet. Like He comes in and starts tying together all sorts of loose, loose ends. He gets in Pentagon's face, Penta L0M's face, trademark, and says, you're my best friend. That blew my mind. How are these guys best friends? Right. <laughs> goes up to Blake, he's like, where's your wife? His wife was chewing on an apple backstage. It's just, it's hilarious. Like all these things, he's just masterfully working a promo, making it care about these four guys, which you didn't really care about as a group like weeks ago. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Big pause. I love it. He didn't know what you said. He's just gone. I love he it. He agreed with me. He agreed with me. Anyway, I love it. All right. Eddie Kingston should be the new ba, 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 ba. Yeah. yeah, Eddie Just Kingston should be getting the title shot. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I'll go. I'll go for that. I'll t I take back everything I said about Kenny. Let's put it all on Eddie Kingston. Listen, mm -hmm. I got to say thank you to Kevin Kleinrock. I want to say thank you to yeah. Thunder Rosa just for being awesome and getting all over TV and running with it and being on Talk is Jericho and all sorts of fun places. Um, maybe we'll get her in here. Maybe you've heard her in here. Maybe we get her tomorrow and 
cut it in. I have no idea. Um, and I want to say thank you to these three guys for always putting up with all my technical crap. And uh, until next time, stay calm and stay in the mix. Penis, don't cut it, Byron, you piece of shit. I saw last week's episode. <laughs>